Okay guys, Mr. May here. Thanks for watching today. The topic is a personal budget planner. Now, we all want to achieve financial freedom and uh, with our personal finances. And to do this, in all honesty, we need to set down exactly what our income and our expenditure is. And from this, we'll be able to analyse what's happening with our money and how we can make decisions to improve the position. Now, in order to do this, I've devised a spreadsheet, as you can see on the screen in front of you, and this enables us to record the details of our income and expenditure. And details, that's the operative word here, because the greater the detail that we put into producing this spreadsheet, the better ability we'll be able to see as to where our money is actually going. Now you can download this spreadsheet. It's in an Excel format, but I'm sure you'll be able to import it into other spreadsheets like Google Sheets or LibreOffice, and uh, you'll be able to fill it in yourselves. But in this session, I'm gonna just guide you through how the spreadsheet works, uh, what you have to do to fill it in to be able to start the first stage of ana analyzing exactly where you're spending your hard-earned income right so we'll just have a quick look around the spreadsheet as you can see it's split up into the months of the year january through to december uh, each month has got a an estimate of the amount that you expect to spend on certain items down here we've got the categories of income and expenditure split up. We'll take you through those in a second. Uh, against the budget, then we've got a column for actual. This is where you'll analyze your credit card statements, notes that you've made of cash spending, etc. your bank statements, receipts. You need to keep a track of where the money's actually going. So if you withdraw a hundred pound out from the bank, you need to make a note of everything you spend that £100 on, whether it be coffees before you go to work, whether it be sandwiches while you're at work, whether it be incidental magazines that you're buying throughout the month. This is the key to this. You need to keep a detailed record of where the money is going, where you are actually spending the money. And then the third column here for each month we've got is a variance, which tells us how we're actually doing, whether we've been good, stuck to our budget, or whether we've been very good and actually spent less than we thought we were going to spend, or the worst scenario, if we've spent more than we estimated to spend. To the left here, I've got two columns, future spending, discretionary, essential. Now, the future spending... What that basically means is, say we've got, um, if we just scroll down, say to motor vehicle expenses, and we've got a category here, MOT test. Now, obviously, MOT test doesn't happen every month. It happens once a year. So if the MOT test is £50 and it's due, say, in October, from January to October, that's 10 months. So... I've devised another little sheet here to calculate how much we need to save each month so we have enough money to get to the, well, to be able to pay for the MOT test. So here, if we say £50 needs to be saved and it's going to take eight months, so put the figure in eight, that means we need to save a monthly amount of £6.25. So, in this case, for the MOT, I'll just fill that in since I've calculated it. The budget is £6.25 and the estimate will be £6.25. And that will be a budget, the actual equal to budget, because we know exactly how much we're saving to save up for the test. What we'll then do is put an N for notional. That means notional N. And that means at the bottom, we've got a line amount to save for future spending so six pound 25 
is what basically out of the salary that you earn each month you need to put away whatever the figure is in there it's only six pound 25 at the moment you need to put that away each month to be able to save that money say in a separate bank account or a savings account or something like that which you'll be able to use then when the mot comes along for 50 pounds so you'll have enough money basically to be able to pay for it right so i'm just gonna fill a few of these columns in so you can see how it works you need to go through this in detail and and fill it in the estimates for each month and then after the month end you need to put the actuals in to see how you've performed so say we've got a salary 1500 and the actual comes in i don't know we've spent uh we've done some overtime or something like that and we get 15 say we get 1600 you can see that we've got an extra 100 pound from the salary so we've done well that month so that needs to be the estimate that you expect that could be a base salary without any overtime and luckily that month you've done 100 pounds of overtime so you've got better so and for all these others you need to consider the income what you're going to receive if any from other activities that you do that generate earnings for you so that's the income part at the top then we go through the housing expenditure i've delivered these into main categories and then subcategories like i say if you need to add any categories you can insert lines if you come across another example of housing expenditure you incur that isn't on this you need to insert the line through the spreadsheet normal mechanism and to uh, insert the actual amount there so i don't know let's say the mortgage is 600 pounds a month and um, the gas 80 pounds electricity 30 pounds what you'll do then is after the month of january's ended um the mortgage you'll fill that in the actual it's likely to be 600 because presumably you'll have a monthly mortgage payment that you know uh, the gas will be 80 because you're on a direct debit 30 for the electricity so that'll equal more or less the same a lot of these items like your tv license i think roughly that's about 12 pound per month you'll know that that's going out with direct debit same with the tv subscription etc so the budgets for these sort of things will be fairly straightforward now as i said you need to go in fill these in the food shopping now that's a, a different kettle of fish i don't know family of uh, three people maybe you'll spend 300 pound on the food shopping but this is where you need to keep the receipts keep a track of what you are spending it may be that month it could be an expensive month and it's actually cost 340 so you need to have a look at that to whether we can make savings there or whether you know we need to adjust the budget to cope with that again um some of these the dental fees that could be a check up say i don't know what is it, 18 pound a year so if we do 18 pound over the 12 months that's one pound 50 we can put a notional figure in like i said before a notional den dental fees how much did it come back at one pound 50 so we enter a one pound 50 in there the budget would be one pound 50 and that again will be added to the amount there the savings that we need to put away future savings seven pounds 75 so it's all working out and again car tax uh if that's 150 pound a year so that's going to be 150 pound over 12 months that's 12 pound 50 again per month that you need to put away to save up notional amount in there 12 pound 50 and away you go car parking fees again that'll be on a monthly basis you'll know whether if, when you go out anywhere maybe into your town you need to pay fees and you pay a charge then you need to look at that again the social nights out it may be that you spend 150 pound uh, again that will be your estimate and um it may be that it comes in on that month you've only spent 130 when you come to analyzing it and that's good you've saved 20 pound there 
uh, which is all to the better, really, basically, hoping you'll have more money in your pocket. And then the family, children, friends category, child's care costs, again, they might be conservative estimate, £300. They're likely to be about the same, so you know exactly how much those are again you need to split these amounts some of these again the insurance if you have any insurance for the family then that will likely be a notional amount unless you're paying it by monthly installments so if it is notional you put the n in there and it will tell you at the bottom the amount to save for future spending now i've only completed a few categories here hopefully to give you a flavor of how to complete the spreadsheet you need to go through, as I've said in detail, each category, add any that are missing. Uh, let me know via Twitter, that'll be a bit at the end, or via any comments on the YouTube. So just on the mathematics of the figures that I've input, I know it's incomplete, it's a rough guide, but the total income was £1,500 on the budget. Um, the total expenditure actually came just under £1,500. It was actually £7.75. So... More or less, I had a balanced budget, so I was living within my means, uh, £7.75 spare. But when the actual figures came in, I managed to make a few savings along the way. And well, it was lucky actually because I got the extra £100, which I wasn't banking on. I didn't. So. The actual amount that I had spare at the end, £87.75, but that was just because, fortunately, I had the £100 extra. If I didn't have any of that over time, then it would have been in a position where I'd have spent more than I'd earned. Now, obviously, you need to put the budget amounts in. The budget's amounts have got to be a balanced budget basically you even need to spend less than you're earning or exactly what you're earning including the notional amounts that you need to put away and then you need to aim to keep within those budgets because otherwise if we'd have had this month and not had the as i said get the extra salary income then we would have been in dire straits basically and then but fortunately as it's come out it's 87.75 to the better plus the amount that you need to put away £20.25 which is towards like I say the car tax the MOT the dental fees and also you could put the 87.75 in like that would be a general reserve for your rainy day funds basically then each month when you start completing this exercise the more effort you put in the better you'll get out of it you need to go in put the estimates in for each month of the year and then after the month is finished you need to go through the actuals or you can build them up throughout the month that would probably be a better idea and then at least you can see how you're actually progressing against the budget and the aim is basically to make as many savings as you can so you have at least some spare reserves that you can call on should any unforeseen circumstances occur just a quick mention now of this discretionary essential column now we can just put a d r and e in the here and this means basically is the discretionary element is things that you control that you can actually forego if you so wished now i know you've got to everybody's got to live a reasonable life but say for instance the sky subscription tv subscription you've got your tv license which it could be classed as discretionary or it could be classed as essential but tv license will say is essential sky subscription could be discretionary in that you could think i don't know if you're paying well, you could be paying a movie package costing around £50, whereas you may not watch a lot of movies. You may decide to, to drop the movie element and just have the normal standard service, which is £30. Or you could decide that you might not want to subscribe at all and just watch the normal terrestrial TV. So that is 
like I say, you'd put a D in there, discretionary, like your mobile phone contract, the amount there, you could probably class that as essential. This is not to make, this is what I'm trying to get at there. You need to class these in your own mind, what you actually control and could give up if you so wished, or what is essential you can't go without. For instance, your mortgage rent, that is essential. All your utilities, everything up there is more or less essential because you need them to live your everyday life. Some of the work-related expenses are going to be essential. And then what the reason we've classified these is, is so when we come to analyse the figures that we've put in there, we can make some decisions like, can we get rid of the TV subscription? Do we want to do that? If so, we can make the saving. Some of the ones like, I don't know, subscriptions to magazines, newspapers or buying magazines, again, they're discretionary. The Unless they're work related and you couldn't work without them, but if they're just for leisure, could you go and browse them in the library? I don't know. Could you browse them on the internet? Is it cheaper to subscription on the internet than it is for the paper magazine? These are all questions you need to ask yourselves. And what we're doing there is you're going through and if it's discretionary, you've got to assess whether are you going to keep it or not? Is it something you can do without for a while to build up a cash reserve to give you more flexibility in your budgeting. That's the sort of decisions that you need to make. The other thing to say though, things with the mortgage, gas, electricity, these are all essential services. But again, we'll cover this in a later session. They're not necessarily areas that we just ignore because if you're on a variable rate mortgage, is there a better deal available? It's something you'd have to look at. Although you need a mortgage and you need to, to finance your house purchase, etc. Can Are you on, say, a 5% variable rate, but you could switch to a 2% rate for a certain period of time? Obviously, that would save you money. That would reduce the amount that you need to spend on that activity per month. So even though the class is essential, it doesn't mean that we can't address those and in future sessions I'm going to be looking at each of these subcategories to see exactly what we can do, if anything, to try and make some worthwhile savings to provide us with a bit more flexibility on our budget. Okay, just a final point now. I've You've probably seen this at the bottom of the screen. The credit card loan analysis. Now, this is very important. Up here, we've got credit card repayments in the budget, in the subcategory of finance. And it's likely that we've all got credit cards. Hopefully, we pay them off every month. But I know it's sometimes difficult. Basically, I've put in this analysis here at the bottom so we can actually focus our minds to how much we've got outstanding on the credit cards. You need to look at your credit card statements or either the paper or the online each month and fill the, the figures in here. And it's just to focus the mind. What tends to happen now is, we, especially with the internet, we maybe make the minimum payment on the credit card. We don't really appreciate the full balance that we've got outstanding and therefore it doesn't register we put it out of our mind which is a, just a human thing to do but here if we write the figures down then at least we will be able to focus exactly how much we it's char we're getting charged for the debt that we've got on the credit cards okay so on the credit cards say i've put in you can put exactly what make of card it is that you've got and so you can identify it there but say on credit card one we've got a balance outstanding two thousand pounds so we type in for the january two thousand pounds at the beginning of the year the interest rate this is very important say on this card it's twenty percent um 
at the offer expiry this is where you're on a balance transfer offer or something but this is a normal rate card at the moment so if we look on our statement you get these figures the value outstanding from your statement and the repayment is the amount that you're paying each month to uh, reduce the balance so in this case if it's a card that's requires a three percent repayment then the repayment will be 60 pound so it put minus 60 pound in there and then if you look at the interest again from the card statement uh, at 20 percent the interest charge will be roughly about 33 pound 33 pence on um, the, a balance of 2000 pound so i mean it's stark isn't it when you look at those figures there um value outstanding two thousand pound a repayment sixty pound but the interest is thirty three pound which is more than half of the repayment so at the interest rate of twenty percent effectively you're only paying off just under half of what you the repayment amount which to me you know it's it's a large the interest is a large amount of the repayment value it just focuses the mind and then as you can see it's calculated the outstanding value again 1973.33 is the outstanding value and again if roughly two percent that would be minus 59 pound again this is from the statement and the interest charge maybe just 31 pound 66 so you've paid nearly 120 pound but the fact of the matter is you've only reduced your balance by 55 pound due to the interest and this is the reason that we've got it there so you can see i mean if you increase the repayment getting the value down quicker then obviously it would benefit you more so this is something that we need to put in there to actually focus the mind and then we could have an interest rate could be a not percent offer the offer might expire on the 30th of october 2016 um that could be a thousand pound the repayment would be 30 the interest is zero so that 30 pound is is contributing wholly to reducing the capital value but again you need to be looking at that it's going to expire in 10 months so you need to go into your savings calculator a thousand pounds over 10 months we need a notional amount in the monthly budget under credit card repayments of a hundred pound so that basically we need to be setting aside that amount to make sure that we've got enough to pay that thousand pound off otherwise the interest rate is going to go up and we'll be charged interest on that balance as well unless we do something like move it to another card or something like that which we could always do but again that's you need to keep this information at your fingertips in a ready, resi, readily bleh, can't speak readily accessible form so we can see at a glance exactly what is happening with our personal finances and and then i've just included a third area personal loan um the value outstanding will be at a mac the loan value and then minus the repayments you won't actually have an interest charge figure because it's most likely if you borrow a thousand pound it'll probably say that the amount you owe is 1275 say and then it'll just be something like 110 pounds a month and then that'll just diminish there'll be no interest charge unlike credit cards which goes on the value the, the personal loan period is fixed so there we have it there's the spreadsheet explained i hope it's been useful to you i know it's been quite a long description but i am eager for people to get in control of their finances and this analysis 
is the first step to do that. So guys, we've come to end of the presentation now. I'm just going to run through just the top level details. First of all, record, record, record. I cannot stress that enough. You need to carry around a notebook. You need to detail it on the notes application of your mobile phone. Keep on top of what you're spending. If you don't record, then it's not going to work for you. You need to know exactly what you're spending. Unless we can find out where the money's going, we're not going to be, be able to take the corrective action to get on top of our personal financial budget. Second bit is the detail, detail, detail. Again, the spreadsheet, you need to include as much detail as you possibly can. Down to, if you're going to work in the morning, buying a coffee, that's the famous one, isn't it? Uh, for £2 every day before you start work, you go to a coffee shop, £2, five days, that's £10 a week, that's £40 a month, roughly. £40 over a year, that's £480. It's a massive amount when you think about it, just for £2 a day. You need to be able to see that, so you need a line on that budget spreadsheet saying cup of coffee before work, £2 a day. £10 a week. You need to record that detail. You need to stick to your budget, put the budget in. You need to aim for a balanced budget. You've got to, your income has got to equal the expenditure. If it doesn't, don't worry because you've taken the first steps. You've got the information down in front of you. You can analyse it you can look to where you can make the savings. Like I say, further sessions, I'm going to go into where we can look to try and make some savings once we've got the whole spreadsheet up to date. That's the fourth thing that I've got on the list. Think about the savings you can make. Do you need that cup of coffee before work that we talked about early, earlier on? Can we save that £10 a week? Do you need that magazine? Do you need that Sky subscription? Is your phone contract the best one that you're on? Think about the savings you can make. Keep thinking all the time. Like I said, the spreadsheet is available for download at my website, mrmay.co.uk. You can also, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me how you're going with your financial planning if you're balancing your budget if i've missed any categories out that i need to add to the spreadsheet for other people you can twitter me at mr moan about everything mr moan ae as it says on the screen there it'd be nice if we can get some motivational talking going between us all so we can rally each other on to stick to our budgets record the information of where we're spending the money keeping the detail so we can get a community to help each other and strive to get on top of our finances and let's reach out for financial freedom thanks for watching today guys it's been quite a long video to digest but i hope you found it useful like i say download the spreadsheet complete it it's the first step that you need to take. Thanks very much.